My ancestors came from the south. They were the first to live on this island. It was not yet the island of orchids, but it already was the island of typhoons and storms. The island where the sea constantly talks to man from the end of the world. When they came close to the coast in the middle of the night, strange fish chased by their rowboats rose up in front of them and guided them to the shore. There, shipwrecked, a treasure awaited them. With the metal coins from this treasure, the Yamis forged their helmets. Their own reflections in the metal symbolized the silver-bodied fish that had shown them the way to this island refuge. Still today, so as not to forget that first day, we seek out the flying fish and relive the night of the silver helmets. While we wait for the sea to calm and make fishing possible, I go hunting. The Yamis always turn to the earth for protection and nourishment when the sea is not hospitable. But don't think that the forest is always kind to us. When a man goes hunting, no child left behind at home must draw anything on the ground. This simple child's game will turn the forest into a labyrinth and the hunter will never find his way back. I always take a spear with me to keep the forest spirits at a respectable distance, but I never use it to hunt. It's a sacred object. Further inland, there is no big game. We must go to the dried up riverbeds to find the dens where the fruit foxes sleep. There are not as many fruit foxes in the forest as there once were, but since we hunt them with dogs, they are easier to catch. This one is still young, too young to eat. I will take him back to the village and wait until he is bigger. Then I will drink his blood, which will make me quick and agile like him.
When the sea shows its anger and forces us to be patient, the earth is our only refuge. In winter, it protects us from the rain and the violent winds, and it provides us with shade and keeps us cool in summer. That is why we build our houses very low in the ground. We live as our ancestors did. We are an ocean people and all our villages face the sea. Our house is big and comfortable. Only three of us live in it, me, my brother and his wife. This is one of the last mornings we will light the fire. Soon, when the heat is unbearable, we will spend much of our time in the hut we built on stilts and which lets the wind through. I love this wild virgin land. Invaders have always tried to conquer it. The Spanish came here. Then other men from Holland built temples and left. Japan wanted to make our island a living museum as recently as 40 years ago. Today, we are under Chinese domination. At school, our children no longer speak our language, but we are still Yamis. We are only 60 kilometers from Taiwan, but we are oceans apart in so many ways. We live in different times. When spring comes, we get ready to celebrate the opening of the fishing season. Everything we do concerns that sacred moment. We help the women gather the last taro roots. Usually there are none left at this time of year, but these were planted late to supply the fishing crew and for the ceremony when we eat lots of them. Now it's time to take our boats out of their winter huts and line them up along the shore to get them ready. This year, the opening of the season is at the same time as an event which is becoming very rare. The ritual presentation of a new boat, mine, which I built with my cousin Siapen. To be able to fish, you yourself must build your boat. A yummy fishing crew stays together for a lifetime. When one of us dies, the boat goes into mourning and we do not use it for one year. Each year, the biggest boat goes out first, but not when there is a new boat. This time, we will go out first, and it is a great honor. Like our ancestors before us, we do not decorate our boat because before carving anything on it, we must be certain that the sea spirits accept it. Uh, 
We look for the fish with black wings at night. The light leads them to our boats. Two months ago, I cut the bamboo shoots, and they are all dry now. We have to bind them together to prepare the torches. and the currents are favorable. The moon is not full, so the light will not be too bright and frighten the fish away. Tonight is our last night of rest. For the ceremony, we wear the ritual costume our ancestors wore the day they first set foot on the island. <laughs> the silver helmet, which we call Volangat, symbolizes the alliance we have formed with the flying fish. It is also a reminder that these fish are the true treasure of our people. Women may not attend the sacrifice. Their presence is only tolerated from a distance. They are forbidden to come near the boats and especially to step foot in them. Evil spirits hover all around us and we feel that women are less protected than we are. And so to chase the spirits away, the women do the dance of the hair. To honor the flying fish, we kill a pig and offer its blood as a sacrifice to the sea and to the fish. This blood will help the fish to fly into our nets. The big feast which precedes the first night at sea is a good opportunity for us all to get together and share the sacrificial meat and the taro with each family. Our village does not have a chief, but in everything we do, we respect the decisions of the oldest among us. Only he knows all the rules. 
He alone can decide when the right moment has come to go out to sea again. Before leaving, we listen to the story of Black Wings and sing his praises. We wait until dark, since for us the night is sacred, commemorating the night when a fish with strange fins appeared to our ancestor in a dream. To find the first fish with black wings, we must go out many kilometers away from the coast. Between sea and sky, only our torches light the black water. 
The entire season depends on our fishing. If we don't bring back fish, it is a bad omen for the village. This is why I sacrifice a young pig, to attract the fish. Black wings taught our ancestors that we cannot fish all year long, but only from March to May. We have very little time to capture the black wings, because they are very rare. Among all species of flying fish, they are the noblest, and they are the first to come to our shores. If other fish enter our nets, we must return them to the sea. We can only fish for one kind at a time. I only cast the net out once because we only take as much fish as we need until the following night. To keep the spirits from entering and poisoning the black wings, we leave them in the boat all night, covered with heavy stones. In the morning, we come back to clean and scrape them with knives that we use only for this purpose. We thank the sea, which has shown us that it has accepted our boat since it has given us many fish. Black wings are creatures of the night. A night we prolong to prepare them, wearing our silver helmets. Only afterwards do we let them dry in the air and the sun. Tonight, as the rule dictates, we will share all these fish with the rest of the village. This time we are sure it will be a good season. Later during the summer, other fish with red wings will come by the thousands into our nets.
kacamata anak udah ngaya kabulan. The silver helmet symbolizes both the respect that these sacred fish impose upon us and the pact they entered into with us, the Yamis. It reminds us that Black Wings comes with us when we fish. He protects us and includes us in the cycle of time. Each time we hang it back up at the end of the first day of fishing, we perform the same gesture our ancestors performed before us and which, if the sea is willing, we will perform again next year.